Hey, it's Don, the Osh Professor here. Today, we're going to talk about vintage video games, and it's not going to be the ones you're thinking about. Most people, when I say vintage video games, are thinking NES, uh, Nintendo early games like that, Super NES. We're going to go over the screen right now and talk about vintage video games. So here we are. What I'm basically talking about are CD-ROM games and then floppy disk drive games as well, too. These I do extremely well on. I usually can get them extremely cheap. Sometimes I buy bundles and boxes of these at live auctions. If you get the right one, you're into some money right off the bat. This isn't the highest one ever sold. They go into the thousands, some of these games. Some of these games still exist, believe it or not, in new incarnations of them. Some of them are on PS4, some of them are on Xbox, and other platforms as well, too. So just keep that in consideration. This is Wasteland. Most people have heard of Wasteland. This is an original. The one thing that you look for if you're looking up prices on these, they'll usually say big box. They're in a big box that they were sold in. That's one of the things I look for. IBM is, is another one. If it says IBM, I usually look it up no matter what. I know most of these games, they were around when I was younger, so I played a lot of these games. It was a new thing. Most people thought, you know, video games were cool, but I always liked um, them. You know, I had an Atari 2600 when it first came out. One of my favorite games um, of this era is in this list, too, which I'll call out in just a few minutes here, but $1,925. This is not some anomaly. There's 24 bids on it. Legit sale. All of these are legit sales. Prince of Persia, a thousand bucks on this one. Broderbund, um, you know, there's a ton of different games out from back in the day. This is usually what I look for. This, IBM Tandy and 100% compatible. The lower the res and things like that, sometimes it actually increases the value uh, just because there weren't a lot of them around. When the market changed and CD-ROMs came out, all of these were dumped. So back in the, say, early to mid-90s, you could have gotten these for a couple bucks a piece, if even that much. Sometimes you could get games for 50 cents or a dollar back in the day on clearance tables. And now some of those games are so rare because they were just dumped, the product was just dumped and trashed, that they go for a ton of money. This was never a, a very popular game back in the day. Um, nowadays, you know, it's, it's the retro classic look on these. Next one, Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. I've played this one. This is an old Lucasfilm. Um, I used to play some of the, um, the Star Wars-related Lucasfilm games back in the day, and I can't remember. Uh, Rebel Assault, that was one of the ones I played a lot. Rebel Assault 1 and Rebel Assault 2. I, I liked those games, actually. And Lucasfilm, so I bought a lot of these other ones, too. This was advertised. It's a pretty decent game for what it was. $425. Now, I didn't sort these in any specific financial order. They're just randomly selected here. The Secret of Monkey Island. This one I've had, I don't know, half a dozen times. Again, most people miss this. Lucas Arts is one of the best ones to get because you can usually get a couple hundred bucks for most of them. Now, Rebel Assault, um, the first one or two, aren't as popular. Um, they still do sell these days. So I've just picked some of the keyer ones here. These are ones that I always look out for. Always, always, always. And I do find some on this list occasionally. They're all going to be fairly scarce, though. So just keep that in mind. Metal Gear. Uh, everybody should know this one. You know, Metal Gear is still around right now. Um, it had its early roots way back in the day um, in 1989. This one's $400, and you can see the clearance price on it there. Chances are it was just trashed at that point for a 99 cents or something even. Most of these aren't open. There's a ton of them that are still sealed. Now, here's an Asian uh, uh, edition on this. I don't care if it's Asian or not. Um, most of these, most people don't care as long as it's still playable. Um, anyway, $400 for The Heretic. Again, these are, these are games that have been around for years, and some of them still are played. There's emulators for a lot of these. Uh, there's insider groups that actually you know, make their own emulators on some of these, and they'll you know, upload the game so you can play them. I'm going to show you what most people do to play these at the very end here, because it's something else that I look for. So this one's $400, as I said. Here's Circuit's Edge. Um, Infocom was a big game company back then. They're scarce nowadays. 361, four bids on this one. Brand new, still sealed. And that's usually what I find. I find more of these sealed than I find them opened and loose. You can even get some of these games and only have part of the floppies or part of the material for it and still sell those for decent money. Just because people have a bad floppy or something on some of the floppy disk versions of these. We're going to show you some more here at the end. 283 from Maniac Mansion. This is another well-known game, too. Um, there's a lot of these, so, you know, 283 on that one. 
the more complete, obviously, the better, too. I've got a bunch of games here right now that we picked up not too long ago, um, and I'm literally starting to go through them. That's why I decided to put this together today. Doom's been around way, way back in the day. It was a DOS game, if I remember right. I remember um, playing Doom the first time and thinking it was really cool, but again, it was very poor graphics compared to today's standards. This is even a newer version than the, the original, so... Anyway, $400 for this version of it. And, and as we know, Doom is still around right this minute. They just had a movie out not too long ago. Uh, now, this is one of my favorites from this era. It's clay animation. The whole game, the whole thing. The Neverhood. Even without the box and just the CD, I usually get 80 bucks for it. This one's pretty hard to solve. I did finish it. It took me a long time on this one. It's the longest I think it's ever taken me to finish a game. It's all puzzles and, and mind games and things along that line that you have to solve. And they're real-world kind of um, events. This one's really cool. If you get it, it's opened, play it. I'm telling you, it's really cool, I have to say. One of my favorites of this era, so. 231 And I've seen this one go up to four and $500, believe it or not. Um, now this is Shadow Warriors. Again, this has been rehashed many times too. CD-ROM again, big box as I said, big box there. 210 on this one. Those are sealed. Another sealed one, big box again, 1994, a different version. There's some people want every version of a specific game, and there's dozens and dozens of versions of Doom. This is Doom 2, but there's dozens of versions of Doom, Doom, Doom 2, and the whole works across the board for many different systems. Uh, sealed again, as I said, 200 on that one. Now this is um, the 3.5 floppy, as I said. The floppy are the best ones. They go for the most money. Um, and ID software invoice. Uh, that's the invoice for this, I would imagine, as well, too. They've got a couple other discs, which I would imagine would be their saves for it, because that's usually typically what you will see. That way it stays with the game, um, and they're not taking up space. The PCs that ran these didn't hold much memory, so... I know somebody who has like 40 some odd versions of Doom. That's one reason why I say there's a ton of these. And people just collect one specific game. He's got them all. He plays them all even, honestly. So, you know, let's move on from here. This one was 760, as I said. Another Doom, 630. The, the other one you just saw is the same version, uh, but it had more with it. So it had probably the saves and the whole works, as I said. So. Uh, next one here is Mega Games. It's Jazz Jackrabbit. Um, it always reminded me of Bucky O'Hare, if you know that character too, which was a short-lived cartoon series and um, action figure line as well as comic books too. So this one goes for 382. Um, Mega Games is another one that I look for, so just keep that in mind. This one here has 28 bids. It's not a, you know, buy it now for a thousand bucks that may not have sold, actually. So this is a legit sale, as all of these are. I try to weed out those when I post these, so, you know, you're getting legit figures on these. So these are all standardized games, again. The rares can be, for the most part, so you're not just going to walk up on these. But Doom, most of the early versions of Doom sell for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, almost any one of those. And it's not the only one. Castle Wolfenstein and things like that. The original versions of some of these can go for horrendously insane amounts of money. Uh, Street Rod, this is another rare one. Um, I never liked this one. It was kind of corny in my book. Um, it, it's just kind of cheesy, even for those standards from the day in my book. But, but this one's rare. It's a five and, and a quarter inch floppy. These are even harder to get for the most part. If it's not a popular game, though, it's not going to go for a ton of money. Uh, next one here, it's another five and a quarter inch floppy. This is Ultima 2. Tons of these games go for money. This is an Atari game. This is, you know, tied in with Sierra. And if you don't know Sierra, they had tons of CD-ROM games back in the day. I've played so many of those. They're more along the lines, a lot of these games, is the lines of, uh, like, the original Warcraft or something along that line. Um, at least that's how I took it. I, I play um, one specific game still to this day. It's Diablo. I personally own every version of Diablo, every extension pack. Um, everything Diablo-wise I own, including for the PS4, um, the new version of Diablo 3. I haven't finished it yet, but I own them all. I finished everything up till 3, for those of you who know what Diablo is. So, just haven't had enough time lately to go in and finish off the game. Um, that's the only one I really still play, honestly. Um, but 220 on this one here. Next one here, Wolfenstein, Spear of Destiny. Most of the Wolfensteins have a good value on them. This is a fairly large category of items to sell. Um, there's a ton of cheap ones that you can make, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks on all day long. So just take that into consideration here. These are the ones that I look for the most, though. $199 on this one. 
another sealed one. Sam and Max hit the road. Now this was a classic. Um, it's kind of like cutesy animation, um, off the wall kind of thing. I've played this one here. This is the floppy version. Um, it's a parental advisory, if that tells you anything. It's another LucasArts. So I've played almost every LucasArts film that they came out, truthfully, uh, just because I liked so much of their games back in the day. Nowadays, obviously, I don't play them. But anyway, we've got one more here to show you. One more thing. This is what people play these on. AST486 DOS Windows Gaming Computer. This is a vintage one. Not necessarily just this one, but this one always seems to go, I mean, across the board. Uh, CD Sound Blaster. Most people aren't going to worry about updating. They want a vintage untied computer. This won't be hooked up to, to the internet, so there won't be any need to update it. It'll be just there to play the games. And there's many people that do this, you know, and most of the, the hardcore vintage gamers are going to have something similar to this and play them old school. It's got the five and a quarter, three and a half floppy. It has a CD-ROM. It's got a sound card to it. Um, for the day and age it is, one gigabyte SSD is pretty decent. This will play pretty much any of these vintage games from that era. So that's what I look for. They tested it. They, they show some images on the inside. And again, most people trash these types of systems thinking they aren't worth anything. They'll just trash them. I, on the other hand, will save parts and pieces. This is why. Because there's not a lot of this, this equipment that's still floating around that you know works and is in good condition. Most people do trash it out and scrap it. So I keep up on this a little bit. We do have a vintage computer that's not hooked up to the line so my son can play some of the Alien games and some of the vintage ones in the original Diablo. I don't have to worry about anything. It's, it's set up just the way it used to be played. Um, but for us, it's just like a nostalgia thing. So that's just the way we do it. It's like having a, you know, coin-operated video game in your house or something like that. This is it for us, so. Well, there you go. There's some more items that I look for. Hopefully that gave you an idea. Hopefully that gave you some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.